The soil boring will tell you whether the foundation soil meets or exceeds design specifications. First, have a surveyor stake out the wall's placement. Make sure the locations are verified by the project supervisor. The contractor will excavate for the leveling pad to the lines and grades shown on the approved plans. Make sure to excavate enough soil behind the wall for the reinforcement material. There are two kinds of leveling pads, aggregate and concrete. Here we show an aggregate leveling pad made of a good compactable base material of 3 quarter inch minus with fines. The pad must extend 6 inches in front and behind the first course of block and be at least 6 inches deep. Compact the aggregate and make sure it's level. Laying the base course of block is the most important step in the construction process, both structurally and aesthetically. Run a string line along the back of the block to help align the wall units. And use the right tools, a shovel, a level, and a rubber mallet. Always begin laying block at the lowest elevation of the wall. First, knock off the lip of the block so that it will lie flat on the leveling pad. Place the blocks side by side flush against each other and make sure the blocks are in full contact with the base. Use your level front to back and side to side. And for best results, use a four foot level along the length of the wall. If the wall site is on an incline, don't slope the blocks. Step them up so they remain consistently level. Check the blocks for proper alignment before moving on to the next step. Before laying the next course, clean any debris off the top of the blocks. Place the second course of blocks on the base course while maintaining running bond. And pull each block forward as far as possible to ensure the correct setback. Blocks should be set flush together. Again, backfill with drainage aggregate directly behind the block and soil fill behind the aggregate. Compact the backfill before the next course is laid. After the first course is installed, leveled and aligned, it's time to add the drain tile and the drainage aggregate. Each project is unique, and the grades on your site will determine at what level to install the drain tile. On this site, four courses were stepped up and backfilled to achieve the proper drainage level. Place the drain tile as low as possible behind the wall so water drains down and away from the wall into a storm drain, or to an area lower than the wall. Once the drain tile is in place, fill in the area behind the blocks with drainage aggregate at least 12 inches from the wall. Shovel the infill soil behind the drainage aggregate and compact the infill with a hand-operated compactor. Make sure the aggregate is level with or slightly below the top of the base course. Then do the same at the front of the wall, adding and compacting the infill soil. Reinforcement is a crucial element of building a stable, long-lasting retaining wall. Your wall construction plan will tell you which courses will need reinforcement and how much to use. Clean any debris off the top layer of blocks. Measure and cut the reinforcement to the design length in the plans. The reinforcement has a design strength direction which must be laid perpendicular to the wall. Place the front edge of the material on the top course two inches from the face of the block. Apply the next course of blocks to secure it in place. To keep it from wrinkling, pull the reinforcement taut and pin the back edge in place with stakes or staples. Add drainage aggregate behind the blocks, then infill the soil and compact it. Details count when constructing an anchor wall. Be consistent. Check the level and alignment of the blocks every third course. 
and periodically test the density of the backfill to ensure proper soil compaction. Protect your wall with a finished grade at the top and bottom. To ensure proper water drainage away from the wall, use six inches of soil with low permeability. This will minimize water seeping into the soil and drainage aggregate behind the wall. When the wall is built to the correct height, move the cap units into place. Begin at the lowest elevation and lay the cap units on top of each wall unit. Placement will vary according to the wall design. Alternate the wide and narrow sides of the caps. When all the caps are in place, adhere them to the wall with a high quality exterior concrete construction adhesive. Use a string line for alignment. The final step is cleaning and restoration. Before you leave the site, brush off the wall and pick up any debris left from the construction process. Notify the job superintendent in writing that construction of the wall is complete and the project is ready for final inspection and acceptance. Following these best practices for construction will ensure the success of your anchor wall.